Candlestick patterns are so key in the forex market and every trader needs to learn and master these patterns and know how to read them, how to trade with these patterns in the market. So in today's episode, I'm going to teach you everything about candlestick patterns from the basic candlestick pattern to bullish candlestick patterns, bearish, and we're going to discover and uncover every detail and their implications in the forex market. So if you're ready for that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you haven't. So you miss any lesson that comes out. Welcome back, my name is JT and this right here is JTFX. So straight away, let's check out these candlestick patterns. We're gonna start by checking out the basic candlestick patterns. On the basic candlestick patterns, we're gonna start by checking out a candlestick called a doji, right? So a doji candlestick is a specific type of a candlestick pattern that forms when the open and closed prices are very close to each other and nearly the same. It represents a state of indecision or equilibrium between buyers and sellers in the market. A doji candlestick has a small or non-existent body as the open and close prices are at or near the same level. However, it has noticeable upper and lower weeks, which indicate the range between high and low prices during the given period of time. Right. So there are different variations of candlestick patterns from classic doji, the long leg doji, dragonfly doji, and gravestone doji. I'm going to show you uh, how they look in a picture form just in a second. But first of all, let's check the implication on how to analyze a doji. So when you meet a doji, this type of a candlestick pattern in the market, it may mean indecision in the market, or it may show a reversal signal in the market. Or when you see this type of candlestick pattern forming near the support and resistance levels, it may mean that the market is about to reverse or to continue with the trend. And before deciding to enter a buy or a sell market, depending on this type of a candlestick pattern called a doji, you may need to confirm the validity of that by checking out how this doji has formed and where in the market and using other confirmations, right? So let's see this part called indecision. When do you say that the candlestick pattern or this doji means indecision? So this doji pattern suggests that market participants are uncertain about the direction of the market. It reflects balance between buyers and sellers, indicating a potential pause in the prevailing trade. So when the market can go down or can go up, but it's ranging at some point and you see uh, this type of a candlestick called a doji at that level, that will mean uh, the indecision in that state or that particular time period, right? So when you see a doji at the end of an uptrend or a downtrend, it can be a signal of potential reversal, indicating that the buyers and sellers are losing momentum and the change in direction may occur, all right? So for example, this market was trending down like this, and now you see a doji candlestick forming at the, at the bottom of that downtrend. It may mean 99% chances of this market to reverse and start going up, all right? And when you, the market is trending up and you see a doji pattern forming there, uh, the 99% chances are that the market may reverse and start going down, all right? So you're gonna see how to check this pattern and how to read it and trend with this doji, right? So you can look at the week to determine the type of a doji it is, right? If there is a long week above the body, it is a gravestone doji, right? Here is the gravestone doji right here. So this is what we call the gravestone doji. This particular candlestick here is what we call the gravestone. So this week is projecting up and you can see a very small body here and a very long uh, week towards up. That is what we call the gravestone doji. And if the week extends beneath the body, it is called the dragonfly. So if we invert this candlestick upside down, it becomes the dragonfly, right? So basically this is the opposite of this. When this is facing up, it is a dragonfly. If this is facing down, it's called a doji, a gravestone doji, right? And by the way, don't confuse between a doji candlestick pattern and what we called a hammer 
candlestick pattern, right? Because we have what we call hammer, right? I don't know if this double M. We have a candlestick pattern called hammer. So they may look closely uh, or they may resemble each other, but for doji candlestick, the body is so small and or even non existent, all right? But for the hammer candlestick, the body must be sizable enough to be visible, right? So don't confuse between the two. I'm gonna show you this type of candlestick called the hammer. But for now, just know that a doji candlestick looks like the one you can see in the picture. So we've seen the dragonfly and doji, and let's see when the wick is long on both sides, it's called the long-legged doji, right? Like you see here, this is what we call the body of the candlestick. This, uh, this what we call uh, a doji. This part here is the is the body, right? And the wick, upper wick is projecting up, and the lower wick on the opposite side. And this what you see is what we call the long legged. Uh, we assume that these are leg and these are another. So the two long legs are projecting on the opposite sides that we call a long legged, right? And if there is no wick at all, it's called a four prize daji. Like you can see here, it's only a body that is seen here, something like a slash. That's what we call the four, the four prize doji. There's no wick whatsoever, there's no wick anywhere. So that is what, what we call the four prize doji, right? So let's check another one. So another candlestick pattern that we're gonna check is what we call the spinning tops, right? That's the second pattern called spinning tops right let's see the spinning tops so this that you can see on the picture here is what we call the spinning tops you can see it looks like the doji that we checked here on this other side you can see you may think that this is this particular candle but clearly you can see that the body of this candlestick pattern is bigger than this right so this when these two candlesticks are formed together like this they are called spinning tops, candlesticks, right? So let's see how to read and the implication of these patterns. So a spinning top is a type of a candlestick pattern that forms when the prior, when the open and closed prizes are near each other, resulting in a small body. And the candlestick has a relatively long upper and lower wicks. It indicates a period of indecision in the market where neither buyers or nor sellers have gain full control. All right. The spinning tops pattern suggests a tug of war between buyers and sellers with prices fluctuating within a relative wide range during the given period. The upper and lower weeks represent the higher and lower prices reached, while the body represents the difference between the open and closed prices. Right. So the interpretation of a spinning top candlestick depends on its content and preceding price. Here are some of the points to consider. Oh, just like the doji, these spinning tops may indicate decision and consolidation, right? So, so the spinning tops indicate a period of indecision in the market where neither buyers or sellers have a clear advantage, just like we saw the, on the doji part. It may show or signify a potential reversal or continuation. The spinning tops can signal both potential reversal or continuation of the trend depending on the context. If it forms after a significant uptrend or downtrend, it can indicate a potential trend reversal. Conservatively, if it occurs between within a range bound market, it can signal a continuation of the existing range. Right. Just like we saw in the doji, when you see this particular stuff forming at the uptrend like this. You see these spinning tops, uh, these are part, these spinning tops uh, candlestick pattern forming at the top of that uptrend. Uh, chances are the market is about to reverse and trading down, right? And similarly to the downtrend, when you see those tops right there, it may mean that the market is about to reverse and start trending up, right? So that is potential reversal or continuation. Oh, and we said uh, when it happens at the range bound, range bound is the sideways market trend when the market when the market is trending uh, at the range bound, and you see these particular tops 
forming here, they may mean uh, that the market may continue trading in that range band, all right? So that is on the continuation. So on the support resistance part, the spinning top forming near the key support resistance level can be significant. It suggests that the market participants are evaluating the strength of the level and the potential for a breakout or reversal, right? So we saw the support and resistance levels like this in the market. And when the, the market is trending up, for example, to here, and you happen to see this type of patterns forming here, it may mean that the market is about to reverse and come to this other part. So you may look for possible sales in this part, right? And when the vice versa, when it happens that it's trending down, hitting this support zone, the market may change going up, right? And some other times, uh, the market may be trending from this resistance level coming down, and you happen to see this, this pattern forming here, Sometimes they may mean that you need to check and watch for the market because there may be a possible breakout from this level and the market will continue going down, breaking out from this uh, support, this support zone, right? So you just don't make up your mind that when this pattern happens at the support level, it's going to reverse. Sometimes it may mean the market may break out from this support zone or from that resistance zone and go past that so you may wait to confirm what's going to happen next either the breakout or the continuation or the reversal right so a confirmation is always needed so let's take part b of these candlestick patterns and this we're gonna see the bullish candlestick patterns we're gonna start by checking out the bullish reversal and later on we're gonna see the bullish uh, continuation right so the reversal patterns on the bullish part we're gonna start by checking out this hammer candlestick pattern so like we saw the doji candlestick pattern may have a very small body and some bigger wicks like this or a very long small body and a wick down a body like this a wick up but for the hammer candlestick pattern this body may be bigger enough to be seen uh, I'm gonna show you this in a second but I just wanted to brief you so let's check out this hammer candle so like you can see in the picture here this candlestick that you see down here is what you call a hammer candlestick pattern a hammer candlestick is a bullish reversal pattern that forms at the bottom of a downtrend it is characterized by a small body near the top of the candlestick and a long lower wick representing a hammer. The upper wick, if present, is typically short or non-existent. Like you can see here, there's no wick at all. So this is just uh, a hammer candle. But if a wick must be there, it's so small or non-existent like that. But if you see a very long wick projecting up, it's no longer a hammer candle. You can talk about a spinning top. But if the wick is non-existent, so that becomes a hammer candle, right? So here are the key characteristics and implication of a hammer candlestick. So talking about the body of the of that candlestick, as we saw, the body must be small, like we can see there, it represent the price movements, right? And this lower wick, like you can see it, projects downward, right? And the upper wick is non-existent and if it's present it's very small and it's hardly to be seen right and the implication of this confirms a bullish reversal right for example you can see here the market is trending down like this and at the end of this downtrend a hammer candlestick pattern has formed down here to signal a bullish reversal so from this point the market now is starting going up because this hammer candlestick just formed at the bottom of this downtrend right so the market has reversed going up so in any case you need to confirm before placing a trade or before entering a trade because a hammer candlestick may form like this and you rush to enter trade only to realize 
that another bearish engulfing candle forms towards down like this a bigger fat red candlestick or bearish candlestick forms going down it may mean that the market is likely to continue that trend so you need to confirm before placing a trade okay so let's check out another candlestick pattern called bullish engulfing so the bullish engulfing pattern is like you can see on this picture here you'll see a red candlestick or a bearish candlestick pattern very small like this uh, fully engulfed or covered by a green pattern like you can see here so in most cases in a in a chart you'll see this type of a pattern forming at the bottom of a downtrend where the market was trending down by reaching out this bottom of the part a bullish engulfing pattern forms from there so this green candlestick or the bullish candlestick will come and cover the whole body of this red candlestick and project up on that and this may mean the market is reversing starting going up all right so let's see that so we can see a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern is a bullish reversal pattern that occurs during a downtrend typically consists of two candlesticks and signifies a potential shift in the market sentiment from bearish to bullish so here's our bullish pattern formed and what it amplifies so the first candlestick that we saw was the red and the second was the green so the green or the bullish part will come and engulf or cover the whole body of the red so those two candlesticks are what forms what we call the a bullish engulfing pattern right so let's see the implication of this pattern it may signify a reversal signal right the bullish engulfing pattern is considered a strong bullish reversal signal it suggests that buyers have overwhelmed sellers and taken control of the market the pattern indicates a potential end of the downtrend and beginning of a new uptrend right so when you see that like we saw back there so like we saw here this was a, a downtrend and reaching here you can see these two patterns formed here this is a bearish pattern a bearish candle and this is a bullish candle but this bullish candle uh, covered or engulfed this covering of this candle is what we call engulfing so this bullish candlestick engulfed completely this bearish candlestick forming a bullish engulfing pattern signifying or showing a potential reversal in this trend because this was a downtrend and now the market is still going up all right so in any pattern you need to do what we call the confirmation right so let's see another pattern called the piercing line piercing line is looking like this in the chart all right so it may seem like the opposite of a bullish reversal that we saw because this bigger candle here is the bearish or the red candle and this green candle forms the, from the halfway of this bearish candlestick from the 50% of this candlestick body going down so that's what we call the piercing line so let's see it so like you can see on the picture here uh, this was initially a downtrend right and reaching this part this bigger red candlestick pattern formed here followed by a smaller bullish candlestick forming from this nearly the 50% of it but it can't reach up here it may form at the 50% or nearly here or let's say estimate by 70 percent but it can't be equal to this cat but it cannot be equal to this pattern so when you see a candlestick pattern looking like this that will mean this is what we call the piercing line right it may mean a reversal in the market sentiment because this was a downtrend and forming of this piercing line the market started going up remember we are talking about a bullish reversal patterns right 
so all the pattern that you can see now are bullish reversals markets going down and when a pattern forms here at the downtrend uh, the market shifts and started going up so this shifting up is what we call the bullish reversal right so that piercing line was another example of a bullish reversal pattern let's see another one so another one or another bullish reversal pattern is what we call the tweezer buttons right so these tweezer buttons looks like uh twins down here looks like uh, hammer candles that are down here but you can see clearly the wicks are very short and not longer like the hammer candlestick patterns so uh, this that you can see on the picture here are what we call the tweezer bottoms right by the way if you want to confirm if a, a candlestick is a is a hammer candlestick you may need to place the Fibonacci tool from up here to the down so if the body of this candlestick is above 38.2 mark of Fibonacci that is what we call a hammer candlestick pattern but if this body is not above the 38.2 mark that is not a hammer candlestick and clearly you can see uh, these weeks of these tweezer bottoms are no longer enough to be called hammer candlestick patterns all right so their shorter weeks are what makes them to be called tweezer bottoms right similarly this may signify a reversal in the trend because this market was trending down and forming of these tweezer bottoms the market started going up right so this was another example of a bullish reversal so another bullish reversal pattern that we're gonna see is what we call the morning star so similarly this morning star candlestick pattern may mean at all will mean a reversal in the trend from a downtrend to an uptrend because this forms at the bottom of the downtrend right so the morning star compresses of three candlestick patterns like you can see down here on a downtrend right you'll see the first candlestick that has no wicks at all this is what we call a marobozu i'll show you later on this marobozu pattern but you'll see a very big fat bearish candlestick like this with no wicks and you'll see a very small doji like pattern but this is not a doji with smaller wicks and up and down and followed by a very bigger green pattern or green candlestick going up from here so this whole thing is what we call a morning star and this will mean a potential reversal on the trend from a downtrend going up another example of a bullish reversal right market going down and forming of this pattern is now going up right so that pattern will be so common in any chart so another example that we're going to look at is what we call the three white soldiers three white soldiers are another part or another example of a bullish reversal pattern on the downtrend a market may form this particular pattern that we can see here uh, shown in this part so the three green candles forming together after a significant downtrend are what we call the three white soldiers right the market was going down and reaching the bottom of the, the downtrend are three bullish patterns forming following each other you can see the first candlestick the first green candlestick has a very smaller wick at the bottom part and no wick at the top followed by another green candle with no wick at the lower part and a wick at the upper part followed by a third candle with no wick down here and a wick 
a small wick on the upper part right so this is what we call three white soldiers when you see this forming in the market next thing you know the market is going to continue going up right so this is a significant shift in the market from a downtrend to the uptrend so when you're looking for a possible entry point you want to place your trade from this part because you've confirmed that this candlestick formed another another so these are three white soldiers meaning the market has high chances of going up from this part right so those that we are looking at were bullish reversal pattern so let's check what we call the bullish continuation patterns in this part we're going to check the first example called a bullish marubozu candlestick pattern right so let's see that bullish marubozu this particular candlestick that you can see here a big fat green candle with no wicks in either part the upper or lower part is what you call a bullish marubozu you know the market was starting going up from this part there was a kind of bullish engulfing part here because this was a bearish candlestick pattern and following that was a green candle engulfing this and this marubozu pattern formed after that confirming that the market is set to go up further right so this marubozu will form uh, when the market is going up and will confirm that the market is continuing trending up right so speaking of this marubozu we said it, it may mean a strong bullish sentiment as we say the market was going up and to confirm that pressure of that or the buyer's pressure this marubozu candlestick pattern will form to signify that the buyers have stepped in with more pressure to push the market up further right so that will signify a strong bullish sentiment and sometimes it may mean the lack of selling pressure because if the buying pressure is so bigger so meaning the selling pressure is so small or there's no selling pressure at all another one is a momentum and confidence the long body of the bullish marbles candlestick reflects a significant price range and signify the dominance of buyers you know just like i told you if this pattern happens it may mean that buyers have stepped in with more buying power or buying pressure overwhelming the sellers or may mean that sellers are not putting any effort in this market at this particular time period so that's why this type of a pattern was formed during that particular time right another one will mean no price rejection just simple as that so remember we are talking about the bullish continuation uh, we saw the bullish marubozu and this that we can see here the second one is what we call the bullish harami you will see a red candle or red bearish candle forming here and another green or the next candle will be green forming nearly uh, at the middle of this candlestick right so this is what we call the bullish harami this will mean the bullish continuation of this market let's see so like like you can see here the market was going up so the market was trending up by reaching here we experienced a small pause or a pullback coming down but another green candlestick was seen here uh, from this part right from the bottom to this nearly the 50 percent of that and this meant that the market will resume with the upper trend going up right because the market was going up and this pattern that we saw here was kind of a pullback or a slight pause and then the market is said to resume with the normal uptrend that was trending previously right so this is a bullish continuation pattern the market was going up by reaching here we saw a small pullback 
and the market resumed with the trend going up. So this is what we call a bullish rami. So another example of a bullish continuation is what we call the rising three methods, right? So you can see these rising three methods form something like an N, right? So, so you can see a greener candle forming here, followed by three bearish candlesticks going down. And from there, another big long green candlestick formed from there going up all right so the market was trending up reaching here we experienced a slight pause or a pullback then the market resumed with the trend so this particular pattern that formed here is what we call the rising three metals when you see this particular uh, pattern forming in the chart it may mean that the market will resume with the the trend or the uptrend because the market was trending up and we had a small pullback here and now the market is going up right but to confirm this make sure you see exactly three bearish patterns going up going down followed by a very big green candle engulfing all these three bearish patterns upwards right so that will mean a three our rising three metals. So let's move to part C of the these candlestick patterns. And we're gonna check bearish candlestick patterns. Right. So similarly on the bearish, we equally have bearish reversals and bearish continuations. So let's start by checking out the bearish reversals. Uh, the first example is what we call the hanging man. So this that you can see. Here is what we call a hanging man candlestick pattern, right? It may look like a hammer candlestick pattern, but now because it has formed at the upper part of an uptrend, we call it a hanging man, right? But if this similar candlestick pattern forms at the bottom of a downtrend, we call it a hammer candlestick, right? So this that we're looking at is what we call the hanging man because the market was trending up right and the top part of this uptrend we saw this particular candlestick showing high chances of the market reversal from trending up to start going down right so this hanging man is a type of a bearish reversal right the market was going up and now starting going down or bearish right so that is what you call the hanging man so this hanging man is basically a hammer candle but forming at the upper part of a bullish trend all right or an uptrend but when this particular pattern forms at the bottom part of a downtrend like this uh, market coming down we call it a hammer candlestick pattern right but this that you can see here is what you call a hanging man it will mean a bearish reversal so similarly, this hanging man will mean the reversal signal uh, because it has formed at the upper part of an uptrend, meaning the market is said to go down, right? That reversal. And may show a selling pressure because the market was going up. Now the sellers have stepped in with more momentum. Now the selling pressure is exceeding here and now the market is going to reverse trending down. And the trend another is a potential resistance level because if the market trends up and hitting this part uh, the market reverses going down it may mean that this is a very strong resistance level right and similarly to all candlestick pattern you need to make a confirmation before placing a trade right you wait for a clear reversal to to happen or to occur before you enter a selling trade Another example of a bearish reversal is what we call the shooting star. So a shooting star is just like an inverse hammer candle because a hammer candle looks like that. Uh, let me draw a hammer. A hammer looks like this. And when you, you inverse this hammer like this, going up, 
this is what we call an inverse or an inverse hammer but when it forms at the top part of an uptrend we call it a shooting star all right so this is what you call a shooting star forming at the upper part of an uptrend meaning or signifying a bearish reversal right so you can see the implications of this it may signify a reversal signal like you saw the market going up but reaching here is now trending down that was a reversal or to me mean the selling pressure just like you saw because now sellers have stepped in and now they're making the market to change the direction going down or the potential resistance level like you saw because the market cannot break out of this region so we call this region a potential resistance level so another example of a bearish reversal is what we call the bearish engulfing just like we saw the bullish engulfing the bullish this was the greener candle the red candle was here a very small red candle and a greener candle was seen here engulfing that red candle but it's opposite to this bearish engulfing because you can see that the green candle has been engulfed by this red candle so we call this a bearish engulfing you can see on the picture the market is trending up but reaching this top part of this uptrend we saw a red candle engulfing this green candle here showing that the market is about to reverse going down right so because this was an uptrend by reaching this top of this trend up here we saw a red candle coming and engulfing this green candle completely forming a bearish engulfing meaning the market is said to reverse and going down right so just like we said it may mean a reversal signal or the market sentiment shift from up going down a potential a potential resistance level uh, just like any other bearish reversal this will mean this is a potential resistance level and for any pattern you need to make a confirmation before you place a trade right so another bearish reversal is what we call the tweezer tops the other one that we saw last time it was tweezer bottoms all right but this is a tweezer tops forming at the top of an uptrend and now the market is said to reverse and going down so these two small pattern forming up at the upper part of an uptrend are what we call tweezer tops and when you see them at the upper part of an uptrend just know that ch higher chances are the market is said to reverse and start going down right so you may look for possible sell trade at this point up here right just like so the reversal signal like any other bearish reversal the market sentiment shift from up going down and the potential re resistance level like we saw up here this is a potential reversal or potential resistance level because when the market hits this region these teaser tops forms here meaning the market will start going down so this is a potential resistance level shown by these teaser tops so another example of a bearish reversal is what you call the dark cloud cover dark cloud cover will form a pattern like you can see on this picture you see a market trending up by reaching here a bearish reversal pattern will form here that we call the dark cloud cover a green candlestick will be seen here and followed by a red candlestick like you see but this pattern will come nearly to the 70% of this candlestick body now followed by a bearish or red candle with a weak projection reaching at this 50% of this green candlestick right so this will mean a potential reversal of this pattern going down so that is called the dark cover 
So similarly, this dark cloud cover will have an implication that this is a reversal signal to sellers that you may now start thinking about taking a short trade from there. Or it may mean a market sentiment shift from the upper trend to reverse going down. So the reversal of the pattern. And just like any other pattern, you may need to confirm the validity of the reversal before you enter a market trade, right? Another example is what we call the evening star. So the evening star will similarly form at the top part of an uptrend. And the evening star will look like something like this, uh, formed by three candlestick patterns, like you can see here, or three candlesticks. The first will be a very fat, bullish candlestick like a uh, marubozu like we saw, followed by another smaller green candlestick at that top part. And the third candle will be a very big green or bearish pattern engulfing this smaller pattern going down. So this whole, this whole pattern is what we call the evening star. Right. It forms at the upper part of an uptrend to signify that this is a potential resist, resistance level and now the market is said to reverse going down. So when you see this type of a candlestick pattern at the upper part of an uptrend, you may think about possible sell trades, right? But similarly, you may need to confirm your entry before you enter the trade. Uh, so another pattern on this bearish reversal is what we call the three black crows. Uh, this is an, an opposite of that three white soldiers that we saw. So the three white soldiers were three green candlesticks following each other from a downtrend, right? So we saw three green candlestick patterns following each other meaning a reversal of that downtrend going up. But for this, we can see three candlestick, or three bearish candlestick patterns forming at the top of an uptrend. So to signify that this market sentiment is about to reverse going down, right? So this was an uptrend reaching here. We saw the first, second, and third candlestick patterns were all bearish patterns and you can see their characteristics uh, the first one has a smaller week going up no week at the lower part and this second one has no week at the upper and a week at the lower part and the third candlestick has no week on the upper and a week at the a lower part so this whole pattern is what we call the three black crows are the opposite of the three white soldiers because this has formed at the upper part of an uptrend to signify a potential reversal going down, right? So let's check another part of the bearish pattern that we see a bearish continuation. So the bearish continuation patterns the first one we see the bearish marubozu. Like we saw the bullish marubozu, the bearish marubozu looks like, like you can see here, is a very big fat bearish candlestick or the red candlestick forming on the downtrend to signify a potential continuation of that trend, right? So this bearish marubozu will have no weeks on the either side and it's a very big bearish candlestick pattern so its implication are of bearish continuation like we saw the bearish marubozu suggests a continuation of the existing downtrend it indicates a strong selling pressure and lack of buying interest right so on this particular time period uh, the sellers have taken control of the market completely and there's no selling pressure being noticed on this particular time period 
and this mark assignment may mean that market is driven by sellers right uh, another one may mean the lack of buying interest like we saw and before you enter a trade make sure you confirm that that is a very valid entry point because this may mean a potential continuation but something may happen so don't rush to place a sell trade before you confirm right so that was a bearish marabozo another one is what we call the bearish harami bearish harami just like a bullish harami this is an opposite of a bullish harami so the first candlestick will be the green followed by a red candlestick forming at the middle of this you know this is not similar to the engulfing because if this first was on this other side we could say it is an engulfing right but this red candlestick pattern formed after the green pattern has formed so so that is what we call the bearish harami so you'll see a bearish harami in the downtrend signifying a, a potential continuation because the market was going down and now we saw a, a slight pullback right here a slight pause and now the market is resuming with the downtrend right so when you see a pattern like this forming just know that the market will still continue with that downtrend so that is a downtrend continuation or, a down, or the bearish continuation pattern forming there right so another one is what we call the falling three metals right we saw the rising three metals now but this is not what we call the falling three metals so the the so the rising three metals formed a pattern like an n but you can see this the following three methods form something like an opposite n like a mirrored n let me do it properly like a mirrored n ah just like that right so the market is going down and there is a slight pullback here and the market resumes with the downtrend going down so you'll see you'll see those three bullish patterns there followed by a very strong bearish pattern golfing all these three patterns you know the market was going down and this very big bearish candle forms followed by three smaller bullish patterns and now the fourth candlestick pattern is so big and it's a red one meaning this is a bearish continuation okay so this was a small pullback on this downtrend and then the market is reversing or continuing with the downtrend right so just like any other pattern you need to confirm the validity of that falling three metals before you enter a trade all right so often look for confirmation through subsequent price action and this can include further bearish follow through in subsequent candles of breakdown of support levels right so those were the bearish continuation patterns right so we checked the basic patterns and we checked these were basic we checked the bullish patterns And we check the bearish patterns right so all these so all these patterns you'll meet them in the market when you trade the forex market right so consider to check the validity of those patterns before you enter a trade and practice this more often and you may need if you may need to have this particular notebook on uh, the soft copy i may send to you because i was picking key points but you can go deeper and start learning from these patterns from a very detailed angle looking at them and checking on the market right so this brings us to the end of this episode and i hope you learned something with this and if you really did make sure you hit the like 
to appreciate and make sure you subscribe if you haven't so you won't miss any lesson that comes up so i hope to see you in the next episode thank you for watching